we are now reaching the season finale of this Smash World Tour Nintendo shutdown ordeal that's been happening for about a week. And today I wanted to really specifically talk about Panda Global because we've seen this esports organization pretty much crumble in the span of a week. They put out this statement saying they heard the concerns of the Smash community and is taking immediate action. Allen is no longer CEO effective immediately. Now, in the statement prior to this one, they admitted that what Smash World Tour has said about Dr. Allen's uh, conduct was true. They not only just corroborated, but they confirmed that what Smash World Tour was saying and other tournament organizations were corroborating was absolutely true. And when they say in their statement, they heard the concerns of the Smash community, and that's why uh, Dr. Allen is no longer CEO. That's not true. If that was the reasoning for Dr. Allen being uh, removed as CEO, then you would have put that in your last statement. The truth is that, especially after that last statement was made, um, you know, you notice immediately that you have eroded the trust of the public, the people who um, uh, are fans of Penn Global in any capacity. You've definitely eroded the trust of the Smash community. Uh, you've had various people from within your organization, including players, deciding to leave, giving their resignations left and right, including players from uh, other communities. We had Punk from the Street Fighter community uh, tweet that he was sending in his resignation. He's, he's no longer a part of Panda Global. So, you, you know, what's one way to stem the bleeding? Well, let's remove the problem. And the problem was Dr. Allen. So it's not really a smash community. You guys are just trying to stem the bleeding. Okay, let's just let's just be honest about that. Now, a lot of people are also bringing up the fact that Dr. Allen is still the owner of Panda Global. So even if he's removed and whatever, you guys go on this apology tour, and you know he still reeks the benefit of you know Panda Global's resurgence. I guess we should say. Um, and I feel like you, you're not going to repair this company until the day that you put out a message that says Dr. Allen is not involved with any day-to-day -day activities of Panda Global. And uh, he is in the process of seeking a buyer for his shares. If you don't do that, then Panda Global is 100% going to just not exist because you've eroded and destroyed uh, the currency that matters and that's trust. And once you do that, the only way to regain it is to completely remove the person that destroyed it in the first place. And that person was Dr. Allen. They also claim that additionally due to security concerns for our staff and contractors, the Panda Cup finale is postponed. Um, so that, that finale was supposed to take place in like a week or something like that. Uh, it's now gone. So the Smash community had two circuits happening this year, and now they're effectively down to zero. Ludwig has stepped in, and he has said that he is going to put together an invitation. I think he said 16 players. Uh, if it's, I think it's 16 from Melee, 16 from Ultimate. I might be wrong. They're being invited to play. And, um, and the thing about Ludwig putting this on is it's almost like a good... Um, way to look at the Smash community as a whole, which is when Ludwig is, you know, Ludwig does this, this isn't a financial opportunity for uh, Ludwig. More than likely, he's going to lose money on this endeavor. And I think that's like the key thing that I really would like Nintendo to understand about the Smash community and what makes what Dr. Allen did, what makes it so, so bad. The Smash community is not here for 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 money. You know, there's no money to be made. Like no one, there's no kid right now. You know, no one's gonna tell a 13 year old kid who says I want to play Smash professionally. No one's gonna tell him like, yeah, man, you're gonna get rich off of this. The the people at this community from top to bottom, a lot of this is really love and 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 passion. You know, for most people, as long as they can break even or they can live while still, you know, participating in Smash. They're going to go ahead and continue to do it. And that's what makes what Dr. Allen did so awful is because you had this person that had really, I mean, a golden opportunity. So many companies would kill 
to be a partner of Nintendo in anything because that logo that you can put on your future pitch decks that you make to other companies is so valuable that you could tell future companies that you're trying to get into a contract with that you can tell them I was a partner with Nintendo. You know, Nintendo and Disney probably like two of the most valuable logos you can put into those decks. And Dr. Allen took, he absolutely took advantage of that opportunity that he was able to get for his company and he abused it. He abused that newfound power that he had, telling people my big brother Nintendo is now going to come beat you up and break your legs if you don't give me the streaming rights or the broadcasting rights to your event. Um, Even if Dr. Allen was completely removed from the company, this partnership with Nintendo is over. I do not foresee Nintendo ever wanting to work with Pan Global ever again. I do think that Nintendo is still pushing to have this event happen at some point uh, next year. Uh, I'm sure that Nintendo doesn't want to be, you know, announcing this circuit and all of a sudden there is just no end to it. And I think, as I said before, one of the reasons why Nintendo was still saying that Panda Global is a key partner is probably because the decision has already been made in some capacity that this is never going to happen again. And, um, but you're better off just finishing what you started. And then at that point, you just don't, you know, sign on to a- another partnership. Then we have Dr. Allen saying, I've stepped down as CEO of Panda to protect the safety and well-being of the team. No, you were probably more than likely you were forced to step down. My statement with evidence is coming. He claims that Smash World Tour lied and beyond the summit leadership put the community in jeopardy. We have no idea what that means. I really hope you have you know, 4K HD video and audio evidence shot by Steven Spielberg with what you're trying to put forward because you do have to understand this man has just zero trust from the Smash community. I really don't think that there's anything this man can say to rectify the situation and maybe try to find a way to sneak his way back in the CEO or somehow still be part of Panda Global and everything's just uh, goody goody. So I feel when it comes to this, we have the potential of a, of a, a, a positive uh, future and we have the potential for a negative future. A negative future would be Nintendo reconvening and feeling like every time they try to do something with Smash Brothers, it blows up in their faces, whether that was partnering with old competitors that were involved in all these scandals and sexual harassment claims, or uh, finally you know, seeking and finding a partner, putting on a circuit, something that they feel the fans have been asking for for a while, and then uh, for it to just blow up in their faces the way it has done right now. One negative uh, future because of all of that is Nintendo kind of just making this decision of like, we're done with this, you know, no more licenses and kind of just completely shutting that part out um, of their company. That would obviously be a very negative um, outcome of all of this. But there is a potential for a positive. And I think I'm hoping that the positive is going to be employees at Nintendo, um, hopefully trying to make Nintendo understand the reality of what's happening and maybe helping them to understand why Nintendo seems to be the only company that's ha- that has this problem. <laughs> Whereas you see these other companies like Capcom and NetherRealm do a really good job of you know Capcom being able to do their own tour, but that at the same time, uh, you, you have these other grassroots tournaments that happen and events that happen throughout the year. And a lot of that is because those other companies don't, seek control over these events what they act as um are guardrails you know and that's really what nintendo that the, that's the position nintendo is supposed to be in when it comes to supporting your community you're not supposed to have full control you're not supposed to have a chokehold on uh every single thing they do you you are there to be the guardrails to make sure that they don't you know stray too far from the path of uh, what these events are are supposed to be about. And for the most part, especially when you think about, you know, the biggest events that people talk about throughout the year, they are run really, really well. They do take health and safety uh, pretty seriously. I mean, look, you saw the main state final. Uh, both finalists wore masks. I think they do take health and safety pretty seriously at uh, at these events. And I think it's it's 
my hope is that they're convincing those decision makers at Nintendo of, you know, hitting a little bit like hitting the reset button and begin to understand, you know, what is our role? What is Nintendo's role in the community running events and tournaments for a game that we created and one where obviously we own the intellectual property of? And my hope to that is that they will begin to understand that everything that's being done within this community is really out of love. There's there's no financial gain from this. When Smash World Tour puts together this circuit that they had done this year and their hopes of doing it again next year, no one's getting rich and famous off, off of this thing. It's really being done as an endeavor out of love for the community because the people who created this game are not doing this, right? They're not putting up a $350,000 pot. And that's okay if Nintendo has decided we do not want to dedicate the time and resource to this. That's okay. But you have to understand that when you create something, there's a demand for it within your community, within Nintendo fans. There's this demand for uh, competitive play, then if you're not going to do it, then you have to be able to allow others to do it. And my hope is that people on Nintendo will understand that now is actually the perfect time to hit the reset button and work with, I think I brought up before one of my previous videos, it's kind of like a dedicated group. And this group is there to effectively work as in uh, like a middleman between Nintendo and these events that are run throughout the year to sort of give their stamp of approval. Not really that they are licensed or working with this official partnership capacity with Nintendo, but like the stamp of approval of this event is being run to the very high standards that themselves and Nintendo have been able to agree uh, to. And in that sense, you're able to give the community exactly what they want. Because at this point, Nintendo's, I mean, this community is not asking Nintendo for money, time, and resources. <laughs> they're, ba they're, they're literally doing what is legally required. They just need your permission to run this. And I understand why Nintendo wants to ensure that these events are being run the right way. And that's why it's important to once again, hit that reset button and come together and, and, and sort of reestablish that trust. And as I said, this is literally the perfect moment to do it. Because internally in Nintendo, you have to be able to admit that you messed up when you when you partnered with Dr. Allen and, and Panda Global, because you chose the wrong partner. Because when it comes to Super Smash Brothers, the people who are at the top of that list, the people who are organizing these tournaments, money is the last thing on their mind. Greed is the last thing on their mind. Them wanting to have full control over the scene is the last thing on their mind. The only thing on their mind is we want to be able to share this game with as many people as we possibly can. Those are the right partners to pick. And it seems like Smash War Tour, BTS, BGBC, it it's pretty clear that they're the ones that have been doing the work year after year to showcase that they are responsible enough to do this. And you know, you have to be able to meet them in the middle, not them come all the way to you or you go all the way to them. And I feel like that's kind of maybe a potential solution for this going forward. And, but it really rests on Nintendo's shoulders. You know, at one point, Smash World Tour said that Nintendo reached out to them. You know, my hope is that it'll happen again because there is a hole now exists. Um, fans, this community wants a circuit. And, you know, hopefully Nintendo will be there to, um, to support it. But, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. I'll probably do another video about Dr. Allen if, if and when he puts out this, you know, earth shattering evidence that he uh, has. So stay tuned to that. Like it if you like it, subscribe. Uh, it definitely helps out the channel. And thank you guys for watching.